Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a special surgeon question and answer session all about the four must know facts about the Ross procedure. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Ismail El Hamamsi, who is a world renowned Ross procedure surgeon at Mount Sinai Health in New York City, New York. During his extraordinary career, Dr. El Hamamsi has performed over 800 Ross procedures. Dr. El Hamamsi, it is great to see you again and thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Adam. Great to see you as always. Yeah, so I am very excited for this conversation given your commitment to the Ross procedure and my experience as a Ross procedure patient Let's get started with a big question. Is there any new data about patient outcomes for the Ross procedure? Yeah, it's interesting, Adam. As you know, the Ross procedure is basically a replacement of the aortic valve with the patient's own pulmonary valve, which is a mirror image of a normal aortic valve. And it's a living valve that remains alive over the long term. Just a couple of months ago, we published a study in JAMA Cardiology where we looked at a cohort of patients who had undergone the Ross procedure back in the 90s. These were part of a randomized trial that we had published back in 2010 in the Lancet. And we decided to update their follow-up and report the outcomes now into the third decade after the Ross procedure. So this is the longest published follow-up available in the literature. The average follow-up was 25 years. And remarkably, the survival of these patients continues to mirror that of the general population. That is, that is truly unique within the field of valve surgery. There are no other operations so far that have been demonstrated to restore survival that far after the operation. Dr. Helmamsi, this is fantastic new research. And so, you know, my inbox is already lighting up with questions about the Ross procedure. Would you say there is a renewed enthusiasm about the Ross? Absolutely so, Adam. I would say in, over the last five to seven years, there's been a true global Ross renaissance, including here in North America. The, uh, and it's all really rooted in the evidence that's been published over the last 10 to 15 years, showing the multiple benefits of a Ross procedure versus a mechanical or a biological aortic valve replacement, namely in terms of uh, survival of the patients, quality of life, durability of the operation, hemodynamics, and what we've observed in North America when we look at the SDS database is a more than eightfold increase in volumes of Ross procedures being done over the last five to six years, which now amounts to about over 7% of patients under the age of 60 in the U.S. getting a Ross procedure, as opposed to less than 1% of the patients in that age range getting a Ross about six or seven years ago. Dr. Lamomsi, I've got to ask you, what steps are being taken to manage this Ross procedure renaissance? Well, that's a great uh, question, Adam. I think the, the, that renewed enthusiasm for the Ross also has to be tempered against the potential risks associated with the operation. There's no doubt the Ross is a more complex operation than a regular aortic valve replacement. And for that reason, it is very important to emphasize the notion of Ross reference centers. Why? Because we there's a clear volume outcome relationship when it comes to complex cardiac surgery that's been well established. And there is recent data that was presented at the AATS meeting last month in Toronto that analyzed those North American uh, volumes of Rosses and outcomes. And what they clearly demonstrated was a volume outcome relationship. Low volume centers had higher uh, 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 complications after the operation, high volume centers had lower rates of complications. So the idea of a Ross reference center is not just a surgeon who does a lot of Ross procedure. The idea is that the patient is in the middle of the story, but there's a whole team managing the patient that really ensures uh, perfect outcomes after the operation. Remember, these are all young patients, Adam, and we really have to be batting a thousand when we do this. There's no room for any error. So it takes dedicated anesthesia, dedicated nurses, perfusionists, intensivists, all these people having seeing a lot of these operations, having a lot of muscle memory, a lot of pattern recognition, knowing exactly what we need to be looking for 
and what we need to be doing for these operations to be successful, not just in the short term to be safe, but also in the long term to be durable. Dr. El Hamamsi, I can't thank you enough for working with other medical teams to establish these centers of excellence for the Ross procedure. I've got to ask, how is your practice being impacted by this enthusiasm for the Ross? Last year alone, we did over 100 Ross procedure, which is quite a remarkable uh, number. Uh, but more proudly so, you know, each and every one of these patients uh, went home well and safe with a successful result. And also what I'm excited about is we recently analyzed the outcomes of 450 patients and less than 5% of the patients have needed any re-intervention after the ROS procedures. Dr. a 100 ROS procedures in a year, less than 5% re-operation rates in your series. This is downright outstanding. And on behalf of your patients, patients at heartvalvesurgery.com and patients all over the world, I can't thank you enough for your time, your commitment, and your dedication to advancing the Ross procedure. Thanks so much for being with me today. And Adam, right back at you. Thank you so much for having me today. And thank you for all the work you do educating patients and allowing them to understand all of the different options for their valve surgeries. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.